Okay, response to the Belfast boy. Chris, thanks. This is a response to your video. A question for symbolic, the meaning of life. Thanks a lot. It's a great video, man. It's a great video. Um, and asks, you know, a core question. If you're an atheist, what is the meaning of life? If you're an atheist, if, uh, if you're a theist, um, you know, uh, you may have a meaning assigned to you by a deity or you can focus on, for instance, spreading a religion or uh, what have you. Um, but what if you're an atheist? You know, where do you derive meaning in life? It's a great question. You know, um, I, I like to analyze the terms. You know, the term meaning uh, actually has two kind of meanings. Uh, one is if we ask what is the meaning of a sentence, I like to imagine a, uh, a series of symbols lined up uh, that we don't understand. You know, we look at it, um, maybe the characters convince us that this is some kind of writing, but we don't understand the language. And then we ask, well, what does this mean? Um, and, uh, you know, and of course, if we can identify what language it is, we can translate it. But if we can't identify the language, um, you know, then we don't, we don't know what it means. We'll not know what it means. But let's imagine that we can know what it means, you know, that we can, uh, we can translate it or decipher it. Um, what if the sentence simply says, this is a sentence? It's actually a, a trivial meaning. Uh, it tells us nothing. Uh, so in that sense, it's, it's, it's useless to really uh, know the meaning of that, of that particular sentence. Um, so I, I would think that what, what gives a sentence meaning is a reference outside of itself. Self-reference seems to be, in a sense, meaningless or trivially meaningful. So uh, this sort of leads me to believe that um, a search for meaning is a search for context. Um, um, uh, also, we could take a look at, we can ask the question about, uh, rather than about ourselves, about other things. So we can say, what is the meaning of a bird? And what is the meaning of a cat? or that cat, or that bird. And when we ask that question, we become aware that, well, then the, 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 the question is not as, um, as engaging for us. You know, it, it becomes engaging when we ask it about ourselves. So it's a personal question, sort of, I think, a part of a, a personal search for our own, our own, you know, it's an individual question about ourselves. Um, you know, when it does, when we do ask questions about what is the purpose of birds, cats? We usually fall back on a systemic explanation of them, you know, in nature. Uh, if we take things, actually, if we take things that we uh, are kind of alienated from or repulsed from, like say slugs or worms or insects, um, that people have a, a, a a, a disaffinity towards. Um, we actually uh, console ourselves with the fact that they that they have a place in a greater sy systemic, uh, in a greater system. So we'll say, well, yeah, well, we don't like worms, but you know, worms till the soil, and we don't really like uh, uh, certain bugs, but, you know, but they pollinate the flowers and they serve a purpose. And here's where we get sort of a second meaning. We, well, for one, we're embedding them into a larger system um, of nature. <clears throat> and two, we're then seeing a, a, a sort of a purpose behind them. And this is sort of the second meaning of, of meaning, is, is, is having a purpose. Um, you know, we have a purpose, we know where to go, it's greater than a goal. Um, an interesting thing, though, about cats, dogs, and insects, we as humans have sort of removed ourselves from nature. You know, we sort of built up artificial civilizations, uh, and we tamper with nature and sort of adjust nature to us, rather than being embedded in nature as perhaps we once were, you know, 100,000 years ago, uh, when we were living in small tribes embedded in nature with myths that explained nature, uh, identifying with nature with not such a sharp boundary line, you know, differentiating ourselves from nature, but that's a whole other topic. Um, so anyway, the, the question of purpose comes up. Now, the question of purpose is, is, is um, kind of relates to the religious things. Uh, you know, uh, some religious people will tell you that, you know, if, the, if there is a, a particular, uh, you know, you experience bad luck or tragedy or a limitation or a disease or, or something of this nature that that was given to you, assigned to you by God for a particular purpose. I'm never comfortable with having my own purpose assigned by a deity or an outside being because that seems to take the creativity out of it. You know, it takes my own control out of it, of course, but it also takes a certain amount of cre creativity. 
um, out of it. And I just believe that there's tragedies in the world, you know, and the tragedy, like death, adds meaning and adds adds meaning to life, it adds poignancy to life, adds depth to life. Um, so, uh, you know, being able to sort of conveniently explain everything away as being the assignment of it by a deity uh, actually leaves me feeling flat. It actually leaves me feeling less powerful and disempowered. So I don't like it. Is it true? I don't know if it's true. You know, I tend to think not. But uh, uh, so, what purpose do we have? You know, uh, um, I'm not sure. Purposes is, is thing. Tools are for various purposes. And so when we view ourselves as tools, it, uh, usually we have to decide what is a greater purpose. And here I think we, we can get into the realm of, of myths. If you've, if you've read any or watched any videos on, on Joseph Campbell, uh, you know, we can find a myth. We can, we can basically, again, embed ourselves as part of, a, as actors in a, in a larger myth, you know. Now, for some people are satisfied, um, the myth that appeals to them is uh, to have a family, have children, um, uh, build a certain sort of uh, economic stability, um, play that role, build a family, watch the family grow through generations, perfectly valid myth. Um, other people are driven by religious myths, uh, by artistic myths, you know, people who are born to write, they feel they're born to write or born to paint. Um, and I think part of life is exploring what myths have meaning for us, you know, what, what myths engage us, and then to engage in those myths. Um, uh, in a sense, we're sort of in, in service of those myths. You know, there's an interesting Joseph Campbell video somebody sent me where he was talking about uh, Maslow's pyramid. This is used a lot in human resources where you say, okay, p there's levels uh, that people meet. You know, one, they, they try to work, they deal with their survival. After that, they deal with security. After they, they, that, they deal with comfort. And then you get up to a level where people are sort of self-engaged. Uh, self-actualization is the term he used. But what he brings out is that when we're under the sway of a myth, um, it turns that over. You know, people will actually sacrifice themselves for myths. You know, they'll uh, they'll dedicate their lives to them. They'll sacrifice. I mean, even have suicide bombers, right? I mean, to sort of tie into the other topics going on, who feel that their death is meaningful um, by killing themselves and killing others. It, it can be very destructive to be driven by a myth. And if you've read any of Jung, he talks about various archetypes actually driving people. Um, <clears throat> you can be under the influence of archetypes. Um, so, I mean, part of the searching for meaningful myths is to find ones that are healthy and not destructive to ourselves or our, our fellow people. Um, so I think part of this is building... I mean, part of building is seeing ourselves in uh, external contexts, you know, uh, finding those myths that engage us, you know, and mean something to us, and then engaging ourselves in them. Um, 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 and you know, sometimes just the journey is really interesting too. I mean, that might be part of the, that might be a joke, you know, that uh, really the, the real purpose is to be exploring these things. Um, we find that, uh, you know, all, I think all of uh, the search for knowledge and science is to embed ourselves in a better understanding of how the universe works. It doesn't give us a purpose necessarily or reveal a purpose, but it gives us that context uh, that we tend to find meaningful. Um, we're in multiple contexts at once, too. Um, mm, yeah, so it's interesting that self-reference can be trivial. Uh, so it's the external reference that actually kind of, in a sense, gives us meaning. Um, the sense of myth gives us the idea of a purpose, but I always am concerned about that because that sort of makes us the tool of something else. And I know we're, we're you know, an animal that makes tools. A lot of animals make tools, but we're really, uh, I mean, uh, into it. And it doesn't really answer the question of meaning, because if you take a look at a hammer, a hammer has a certain use, it's a tool, it has a purpose. Um, but if you ask yourself, what is the meaning of a hammer? Um, I don't know, is that the meaning of a hammer? It's the purpose. So purpose and meaning are, are, don't quite uh, overlap. Um, uh, they're not quite uh, contiguous, or, uh, you know, they, 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 over, they overlap a little bit, but not, not totally. Um, I think that's kind of what I have. I had some other notes just down here. Um, you know, there may be no purpose in life. It may be something that we have to create for ourselves, which uh, brings up its own philosophical problems. But, um, but um, I, mean, I do think if we think that our purpose is assi assigned to us externally, it, it does take away our empowerment, takes away our creativity. So I prefer our, you know, 
somehow defining our own purpose. Hey, I'm going to attach a link to this video, which is called Dave's Special Purpose. A great video about this dog named Dave that uh, doesn't, of course, doesn't address all these points, but it's kind of interesting. Um, hey, is there a greater purpose in nature that's driving the species on to something out of sort of a teleological end to things? I really don't know. I tend to think not. I tend to think not. I think... Um, there's just sort of a effulgent riot of things and forms and beauties, you know, um, um, and diversity, and uh, that in itself, <coughs> can we can view that as meaningful, that we're part of a, a, a grand <coughs> just diversity of nature. Um, and that, that uh, in that sense, that also gives us meaning. Our uniqueness gives us meaning because we are uniquely us. i got to go. I'm out of time.